Well, hello, NMSDC. How are you? Come on, guys. How are you? Good. All right. You know, you've got a nice meal. It's time to get it on now. Get some exercise in. I live in Washington, D.C. and once lived in Atlanta, and it's so good to be back in Atlanta, particularly for this great conference of the NMSDC, representing everyone, all three million companies and businesses that are members of the United States Chamber of Commerce, the largest business organization in the world. And today we have with us leaders of the top three or three of the top Atlanta-based companies here in the region. And I'm going to engage them in a roundtable discussion conversation that will touch on the current business environment, issues that we all hear about and must understand, whether it's supplier diversity, disruptive technology, and the like. So please join me in welcoming the C-suite executives that you'll be hearing from today. Let me first introduce Paul Jacobson, Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer for Delta Airlines. Paul. Ralph Holmes, President, Southwestern Region, U.S. Markets for Cigna. Ralph. And then finally, Kevin Warren, Chief Marketing Officer for UPS. Kevin. So there are a myriad of issues that we could talk about, and obviously we don't have time to address all of the issues facing <laughs> business today. Uh, when we think about uh, the climate, uh, uh, Paul, uh, and 2020, not so much from a political perspective, <laughs> but you're pessimistic, you're optimistic. What are the big challenges and issues that you see as we sort of engage and in, in enter into a new year? Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here, and thank you all for coming to Atlanta. Uh, hopefully, everybody here flew Delta. If not, we know. <laughs> um, but uh, now, look, business is really strong for us at Delta. 2020 looks to be no different. Uh, we see strong demand from the consumer. Uh, I think people have looked at uh, how they want to spend their discretionary income, and people are much more interested in travel and experiences. And we've been uh, blessed enough to be able to tune our product to really deliver that value to our customers worldwide. And we see 2020 is very, very strong for us, continuing on a great path in 2019. Sure. And you come from finance, and particularly global. What about the global landscape? Are we are dealing with every issue from tariffs and all kinds of issues around international trade. We always say the chamber, 95% of the world's consumers are outside our borders. Right. So the global market matters. Well, obviously, the global market has its challenges. I used to have a full head of hair before becoming CFO. But um, you know, we're, we've, we've adapted to that, you know, whether it's tariffs or whether it's challenges throughout the world. A global portfolio for us helps us to overcome some of those challenges. So partnering with leading carriers in the community, like our recent announcement with LATAM in South and Latin America, Virgin Atlantic in London, China Eastern in, uh, in uh, China, gives us that opportunity to, to learn across the globe how to do business better in the world. Sure. Ralph, one of the big issues that obviously we hear over and over and over again, uh, health care. Uh, again, what do you see, I guess, in 2020, particularly related to business uh, and the work you do at Cigna, uh, opportunities and how do we address this issue and make it work for business and industry? Yeah, I think the, there's a large debate around who pays for health care today, and I think that's uh, probably a worthwhile debate, but I think we're focused on really three major things, which is affordability, um, also quality, and access, because those are the things that are important. Uh, right now, the healthcare, the healthcare expenditures in the country are about three and a half trillion dollars. That's out of a 19 billion trillion dollar national budget, so that's a big number. So it threatens to crowd out other things if it continues to go up. So we're working and looking at ways to lower costs. Our system has been built on an encounter basis, which means if you show up to the physician's office, you pay for a visit. We're now looking closer at what about outcomes, what about value-based arrangements that say if you take a medication and you stop taking that medication before the term is up, it's not going to be effective. And so we are now doing value-based arrangements at Cigna and other companies which say that that company then gives us a portion of that money back. 
because that's what the company paid us for. And if it's not being delivered, we need to make sure it's delivered. I think the other thing that's important is our business is too complicated. We've got to simplify it. And so digital solutions, many of you out there are doing a lot of IT. That's a big issue uh, on this front. And so to a degree that you can deliver digital solutions that improve patient engagement, get you actually engaged in your own healthcare, uh, keep you, well, I'll put it this way, help you to adhere to your pharmaceutical regimen Make sure you take all your medication. Those are things that are really important in this industry. 60% of Americans have a chronic disease. 40% have more than one chronic disease. And if you look at the cost in the system, that's about eight, you know, a person that has two or more chronic diseases, meaning it's complex, costs about eight times more than a healthy person. So, we need to orientate our system to taking care of people before they get sick. That's really the big issue today, and that's what we're working on. Yeah. Kevin, you see uh, as well the world uh, through UPS, uh, particularly the markets and customers. Uh, wh what do you see in the horizon? And, and particularly, as Rap just sort of touched on the disruption in technology and, 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 and how that pl is playing out in the, in the marketplace. Yeah, so we like to say that threats and opportunities are carpool partners. They arrive together. Rarely will you see one without the other. And oftentimes, people or businesses might be consumed with the threats as opposed to really being able to kind of leverage the opportunities. So particularly in, in times of disruption, which we absolutely are having, uh, this whole mega trend of e-commerce, um, of online uh, transactions, and can't get it there fast enough, going from, in our business, shipping from three days to two days to the next day, and in some cases, same day. You know, how do we help our customers, particularly our small and medium-sized customers, which is our number one strategic imperative, how do we allow these businesses to be able to compete um, in this world? Um, and be able to compete with the large retailers. Uh, we know that in this space, the growth rate is, is, is supposed to grow from one to 2% over the next five years. However, the traditional part of that market is going to decline by 10%, and the digital part is going to grow by 19. Mm -hmm. So we're really focused on coming out with offerings and products uh, and partnerships to allow small and medium-sized customers to participate in that 19% growth so they can punch above their weight. And, and with that change and, 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 and it, it, this whole issue that we talk about the workforce and the workforce of the future, and particularly with regards to technology, uh, what opportunities do you see or tell us about any successful programs uh, at Delta uh, uh, for example, around engaging minority business enterprises, particularly in your, in your supply chains? Yeah, no, that's a, it's a, such a great opportunity set because never before has, uh, have we had the resources to be able to identify all of the companies that are out there that are able to do business with Delta. And one of the challenges that I tell our team uh, inside of supply chain is that knowing and meeting and building relationships is the most important piece of it because at the pace of business we have such a tendency to actually just drive through the status quo we don't look for things because we deal with suppliers that have worked with us for a long time they've done a good job and it just takes a little bit more time to identify those new developing uh, companies that could do business with us so what, what technology can do is we are constructing state-of-the-art databases uh, to identify these companies and get them into Delta so that we can really understand how to build those relationships ahead of an RFP rather than just waiting to look through a catalog at the RFP stage to say who are the potential suppliers out there. And that's going to be cutting edge for us and help us achieve our goal of ultimately joining the billion dollar round table within the next 18 months. Yeah. Rep, how about you and, and Kevin as well? I know we may not think about your industry uh, oftentimes in terms of suppliers, but where, what are some of the unique approaches that you all are taking to engage more minority business enterprises? Well, I think we do have a, we've, we've begun a mentoring program to sort of help the businesses learn to scale. 
Um, I think that, um, as I mentioned before, IT is a big one. I think from a healthcare standpoint, we think about things that help the consumers either do a better job of taking care of themselves and monitor what's going on. Uh, my wife's a diabetic, and she's, she's got a meter now that tells her when her blood sugar is going up and down and lets her know when she needs to, to take more insulin. So things like that that are going to help really all of you uh, take care, better care of yourselves are, are things that are emerging. We are constantly looking for new approaches to keep patients engaged, keep them healthy, and as I said, keep them out of the hospital. So to the degree that you're in those types of businesses, um, you know, we'd, we'd like to talk to you. Kevin? And, and I'll, I'll say, you know, th three areas. One, I think our CEO, David Abney, was here this morning. He gave uh, our report card of We've got our chief procurement officer here and on this board, uh, Jose. We've done really well as far as uh, supplier diversity. We've hit our goals and we've given ourselves even taller goals. We're hitting that. Uh, one area last year that we weren't focused on, that we did make an investment, was on the commercial side. And how is it that we sell and engage these small and minority businesses? So we, uh, uh, we invested in some leadership headcount. Uh, Cap Moran, who's one of our top uh, marketing people, uh, was leading up an effort uh, to make sure that the language that we speak in, we show up in places where small and minority-based uh, companies are, that we have a bespoke um, offering and value proposition to help them grow, and by the way, it'll help us uh, grow business as well. And then finally, it's on the partnership front. You know, so we're a big company, almost 500,000 employees, been around for 112 years. We've got scale, we've got a trusted brand, but the, the speed at which small companies can move, the agility, the innovation, sometimes without those legacy systems, they can move a little bit faster. So we're partnering more and more with these, uh, these innovative companies to be able to kind of leverage their innovation and agility combined with our scale and brand reach uh, to come together with a winning combination. Yeah. You know, the, the Business Roundtable, which is one of uh, the trade associations in Washington, uh, recently, uh, some 180 corporate CEOs, uh, including a number from Amazon and Apple and J.P. Morgan and other companies, uh, engaged in an interesting dialogue and commitment. And it is about shifting uh, what has been historically the philosophy of business to not just be about profits and shareholders, uh, but also to be about it, the employees and invest more in uh, suppliers and vendors and the communities in which they operate. Lofty goal, some skeptics and critics say, but how do we get there? Yeah. And so that we understand the real role that business plays, not just about profit, but it's about creating jobs and investing in communities and people. Yeah, well, I think businesses have uh, uh, really been kind of like a pendulum over time. Sometimes they act really good, sometimes they don't act so, so well. And uh, you know, I think over the last couple of decades, businesses have been, uh, tarnished with the uh, reputation of it's all about the money and it doesn't matter and you know that I applaud the efforts of the business roundtable in terms of recognizing what it is in this paradigm that we have as a stewardship responsibility and we at Delta while we're not signatories to that we're not members of the business roundtable actually is pretty consistent with our values because we take our success uh, we try not to take it for granted uh, we share it with all of our stakeholders whether it's the uh, most generous profit sharing program in the world where we've paid out over $6 billion in extra compensation to our employees over the last five years, uh, whether it's the communities we serve in which we've committed to at least 1% of our profits back into the communities uh, that we serve, as well as balancing the investment needs of the company going forward and, uh, and the shareholders as well. Um, we've had a pretty strong track record, but being able to channel that even deeper within the organization to do things like the Supplier Development Academy, where we're taking small businesses and we're hosting them inside Delta for a year-long program uh, to learn how to do business with Delta. We've got to take it upon ourselves to make it easier uh, to do business with Delta, but we also have to give people tools and a leg up to help them understand the competitive dynamic and where we can lend an element of stewardship uh, to our success and to help bring some of these businesses along. That's our calling, that's what we need to do. Well, any other perspective? No, I would say our, uh, our CEO, David Cordani, was one of those signatures, and I think he's 
tried to run a company that way. We, we have a lot of issues on the healthcare side, and we believe through a public and private partnership we can begin to solve some of those things. But we have a lot of issues around uh, healthcare in the country that need to get solved, as well as all the other issues that have to be solved. And at the end of the day, it, it's not just how much money you make, it's really what you contribute to the community, how you treat your employees, and how you treat your customers. Yeah, I'll just say I had the opportunity uh, to attend a, a workshop in, in Davos at the World Economic Forum in January. And the Edelman Trust Index, which is an index that, that measures uh, organizations' trust level, uh, was, reveal, was revealed for, for this year. It was very different. You know, so typically, you know, you're looking at NGOs, you're looking at governments, uh, you're looking at media, um, you're looking at a lot of different organizations. And the organizations that had the highest trust index was corporations, uh, for various reasons. We, you know, we can just kind of go through, you know, what's going on in the world. And so that that's an obligation to be able to leverage that trust index. And I was so happy to see, by the way, where his signature, David Abner, CEO, signed, you know, uh, on the pledge there as far as one of the 80 on the BRT. Uh, and I call that the soul of a company. I mean, you know, you've got your assets. You've got your, you know, we've got a CFO here, your P&L statements, whatever. But the soul of a company, what does the company stand for? And by the way, it's, it's not, it doesn't provide attention to, you know, driving the top line and the bottom line. I think it kind of works hand in hand. Right. So I was really happy to see companies, you know, our companies uh, all kind of standing up, working with all these fantastic small and medium-sized companies to really make a difference, uh, make a difference in our communities, uh, to our customers, and for our employees. You know, uh, Director Henry Childs of the MBDA uh, earlier uh, talked as we all are having conversations as we think back to the point of the workforce of the future. And with the change in demographical shifts, uh, with minority or uh, being majority and all of this data. Uh, and then you add this technology and this automation and artificial intelligence. And there's a lot of concern and worry about how these communities will fare in this new digital economy and economies of the future. Uh, any unique perspectives or uh, approaches that you all are taking to make sure that uh, whether it's the students at HBCUs and other schools or that the workers are prepared uh, to meet the job requirements of your, of your company? Yeah, tra training is such a core part of what we need to do and what we need to invest in. So whether it's educational initiatives across multiple universities within the U.S., pilot training programs, mechanic training programs, the state of business is just changing. And, you know, the comments about the global economy were absolutely appropriate and spot on. We have never been more international and global than at any point in our history than what we are today. Uh, and we don't have all the answers, right? If we have a lot of people making decisions that have the experiences that I have that, you know, think like me, act like me, that's not diversity of thought, and we're not going to be the best at serving our customers. So training up the generation to use the tools to be able to deliver that service across a complex global environment, uh, each with their own cultural values and consumer desires, is going to be table stakes. I mean, as technology continues to uh, drive the pace of business, the excuses for not knowing how to optimally serve a customer halfway around the world are going to go away. And we've got to have people that respond to that uh, very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Any other thoughts? And I'll. And we'll yeah, I'll, I'll just say, you know, traditionally we've looked at the importance of having high IQ in corporations, intelligence quotient. Then, you know, later we said, okay, in addition to that, you have to have high EQ, emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. I think now where we're going, in addition to those two things, is what I like to call a DQ, and that's your digital quotient and your digital skills, and your AI skills, and your ability to be able to kind of distill information uh, to be able to uh, make better decisions and more personalized uh, communications to our customers. So really kind of driving that digital competency from the university and colleges, um, as well as kind of retraining our people, um, and then also partnering with small, uh, medium-sized uh, customers. And by the way, even some of the millennials where they're, native, they're natively digital. So all those are things we have to do in order to be able to compete uh, going forward. Yep. 
So the last question is, so all of these amazing uh, minority-owned enterprises uh, who are here for this conference, uh, if they have business with you, they want to do more. That's why they're here. And it is about how do we create more economic inclusion in this broader process. So what one piece of advice would each of you uh, give to these companies who are here uh, who either want to do business with you or who want to do more? Uh, and w what does that mean and how would you send them off with yeah. some words of wisdom? Well, we're, we're proud to have a booth here and uh, we're going to have a lot of buyers uh, present. Uh, the first thing is make it known. Uh, you don't get 100% of the sales you don't ask for. And uh, as I mentioned in some of my earlier comments, relationships matter. Uh, getting in six months or a year ahead of an RFP and cultivating that relationship is much more effective than coming in because you were selected as the minority participant in the bid. And uh, we've had some great, uh, great successes. We just signed a, uh, a deal with Brown Estates, which is the first and only African-American-owned winery in, uh, in Napa. Uh, that wine will be on our airplanes very soon, and we're, we're excited about that. And it's about finding that and forcing that and making yourselves known to companies like us. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's sometimes too easy to sit back and say, why won't these companies come to me? Sometimes it's hard. We're dealing with thousands and thousands of uh, line items and, and different vendors for each one. So making yourself known, getting out there, building the relationships are going to benefit you in the long term. Yeah, I would say for us, you know, we don't, we're a healthcare company, we don't actually produce a product, right? It's really a service. So for us, what's important is if you can deliver a solution to some of the problems that we face today, our business is too complicated, um, people don't follow their prescription regimens, people don't take care of themselves. If, if you can help solve a problem for us, then we'd like to talk to you because there's, there's lots of issues that need solving with relation to healthcare. And so if you're in that business where you can help us solve some of those issues, we really want to talk to you. Kevin, okay, anything add quickly as, as we're out of time? But yeah, anything else? Just very quickly, I, you know, I'm already a big Delta fan, Delta 360, but I'm a member of the <laughs> Brown Wine Club. <laughs> so you, you definitely got a strong <laughs> customer going forward here. Uh, yeah, I, I would just reiterate. Um, you know, the old Wayne Gretzky quote, skate to where the puck is going, and really kind of understand, you know, the trends in business, realizing that there's, you know, there's risk and opportunities, and the degree that, you know, you guys can be world class on the cutting edge of that, then you're going to make yourself indispensable and, uh, and make yourself even that much more attractive to partner with. Good. Thank you so much for the perspectives, for helping us at least have some conversation about the key issues affecting business and industry in America. Give them a round of applause. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.